Hello, another camera review today, this time a Foxier. But just before we get into it, a quick reminder, please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it. Comment down below, don't forget to subscribe and click on the little bell icon if you want to know when I'm uploading stuff. So this is part of the four cameras I got at once and this is the Foxier um, Arrow Mini Pro. It is a, obviously a Foxier camera uh, with a CCD sensor and a 1.8mm lens. 1.8mm lens is coming quite popular now First, I thought it would be too wide angle, um, but I actually really like it. It's like, you don't notice the fact it it obviously distorts in the side because you're focused in the middle, but it does show a nice wide angle of what you can see. So it means you can tilt upwards quite high to get lots of speed, but you can also still see for landing. Let's take it out, out of the box, shall we? We've got a little card there. Uh, this is the camera itself. Uh, doesn't doesn't go with the traditional lens cap just a little plastic thing look at the size of that lens it's enormous um hopefully this lets a good deal of light in um sort of a, a quite a standard uh, is this a micro size 19 mil across doesn't feel very micro because it's got a massive lens sticking out the front so you've got uh a vcc and this handles quite a range yeah 5 to 40 volts it has um, an OSD built in, not just for changing the settings, but for displaying voltage and stuff like that. So um, it's quite a nice looking camera. One of the crucial things about these, now I, I flew a micro arrow before, um, and I found it to be a really nice camera actually. Um, and they're very cheap. This is like £17 something at the moment. I mean, it always could change, but that is pretty cheap for um, a, a decent little camera. Well, we hope it's decent anyway. Else we're in the box. Wow, this is folded up a lot. Fairly comprehensive instruction sheet with basically all the menu settings you can change. Feels like it's got little tiny bits in it. What we got? We've got a mount. This is, again, these are becoming quite popular as well. Whereas this will go on a certain mount, you pop it into this and it widens out for a different frame. So I like that, the ability to mount in, in different frames without like putting a million washers in and things like that. You've got your more traditional mounts. You've got your OSD board, always handy. A whole bunch of screws and washers. Some cables to plug into it and potentially straight back into your flight controller, depending what sort of connection you've got there. So yeah, it looks pretty nice. Well, let's get it down on the bench for a close up and we'll see how it works. And then we'll find a quad to put it in and see how it flies. So we're just looking at the back of the camera here and you can see you've got your VCC input, your ground, video, OSD and VESN. So Normally speaking, if you just input your power this side, it will just give you a power reading as the OSD. But if that's just coming from a five volt supply, then you can always hook up a direct power to this one and that will display the uh, battery information from this one instead. Of course, most people flying quads and stuff will have an OSD anyway, but I guess if you are on a, a light little plane or something like that and you want uh, all that information without having to install extra flight control and stuff, then this is what you get. So they supply a, a pretty useful cable here. So from this one, you've got uh, solder joints ready for ground power video. And you've also got, you will notice, little connectors on. So you can actually hook them up to a proper connector if you've got that sort of thing in your flight controller. You'll see as well, we've got a little flying connector. And this is for connecting up the supplied OSD board like that. It's a little bit different to many. You notice there's, there's two ground wires going into a single connection there. On, on other cameras, they've mostly had an individual ground and menu connector. This one does things a little bit different. I thought I'd install it in my Coppice One, and right now this is running the Runcam Mini Swift. I think that's what it's called. And that was mainly because I think this is about the right size, and it will just drop straight in there. So now, if I was installing into a brand new build, I'd probably use the supplied cable and do it that way. But where I'm going into an existing build, I kind of like the fact that there's been some standardization here between the pin ordering. So generally it is uh, power ground video uh, and that's quite common in all cameras. So I can literally just grab this. It doesn't really matter that the whole thing doesn't fit as long as I get it at the right part. And I can just connect it straight away and I'm ready to go. So let's get that in. Well, there we go, all installed. And that only took about two minutes because it just went in there. One side effect of using an existing connection there is I haven't got the OSD thing to, to use. So here's one I recorded earlier just to show you what the settings were. 
This is the rundown of using the joystick for the OSD and I haven't got a lens cover so I'm trying my best here and you can see it displays a couple of things by default, some of which go away. Uh, Fox here being the call sign, 2S 6.5 is my voltage and then the timing. You notice that voltage is flashing because it's saying this is a low voltage. And this menu should be pretty familiar to anyone who's had many CCD cameras in the past. This is using the SuperHad 2 sensor again and they all seem to have this very similar firmware for setting up nothing wrong with that it, it's not broken it doesn't need fixing so I'm not going to go through them all uh, you should just realize it's there and you can do a bunch of settings I found the settings as the default pretty sensible press up for about five seconds and you get into this this is the OSD menu where you change your call sign and you decide if you want anything on the screen ratio there alters the um, actual battery voltage so if it's not quite right you can change that ratio to make it right again now I thought I turned everything off but what I did I set my power to um, OLY which means it only shows up if the power is low and I'm merging a tourist battery so if I just turn that to off then that just gets it off my screen actually pretty good the amount of stuff you can do on that one it's a shame I don't actually use it but hey, I've already got an OSD okay let's test out the little Foxier mini arrow on the copies one Looking good there. Sticks out a lot, but so did the uh, the run can camera, and everybody didn't like it for that reason. But uh, you'll definitely see the props in this one. It's practically on top of them. So here we go. We're up, up and away, and instantly I'm thinking, ah, oh, you idiot! What have you done? And here's what I've done. This is an NTSC camera. It's a CCD sensor, so you can't change things. I had just assumed I'd set this to PAL, of course you can't set it to PAL because it's a CCD sensor. So because the last camera on here was PAL, the bottom half of the OSD, which contains my voltage, flight time and all that, is off the screen. There's more lines on PAL than there is an NTSC. Uh, this is basically just going into beta flight and, and moving things up a bit, but I didn't have a laptop on the field, I had no way of changing this, and I was kind of sort of hoping that my timer was accurate for uh, what this looked like. So what does this look like? Well first off to explain there's a little bit of noise you can see in the sky going on. This is uh, nothing to do with the camera this seems to be the VTX basically having noise all over and it shows up worse. I, I know that because I've changed the camera over a couple of times on this and this is what I seem to get. But other than that um, I'm really liking this image. Now there is a difference, there's definitely a difference in colour between uh, CMOS and CCD. So up up until a while ago I would have said CMOS, bleh, take it away, until I got the Rattel and the Rattel was like really amazing. So the Rattel is very bright, uh, almost to the point that maybe the colours are a little bit too bright, a little bit oversaturated, and a CCD sensor tends to come in looking a little bit dimmer. So it's it's not overly bright but it's not quite bright enough either uh, and that's just I think a feature between the two sensors but what I think we've got here is a really nice image um, the the brightness is very even throughout which is something that's always been really good on CCDs um, that wide dynamic range has always been very good and up until like a week ago I thought they were the king of this until the Rattel came along but yeah this is really nice and what's really good about this camera is the price of it it's so cheap and it is a decent camera and I'm loving this 1.8 mm lens now you will notice this is like idiocy number two here that this angle is a bit curious isn't it it's such a wide angle that it's getting in like the bottom of the legs but for me this was a really fun angle. It really did create a different sense of speed to me. It felt like I was sitting further back in the cockpit and I'm sort of looking forwards over the, the quad. And coming along low like this gives a real impression of something completely different. It's a completely different thing. Now, I know many people absolutely hate this. It's a real love or hate thing, this sort of view. Um, I really liked it, actually. I think it's really fun. Now, I say idiocy here because, of course, I would have changed the angle and uh, lifted it up a bit because I had, I had plenty of space to point upwards and, and get some more speed out of it. Guess who forgot their screwdrivers and could not change the angle on this camera? Yep, that's it, me. So, two mistakes there, but um, overall, I'm really loving the image. I've, I've got to say, fantastic camera, really had fun flying it. Absolutely no problems at all just going for it. Well, I say I had no problems all going for it.
I've been doing this little run up the trees and through this gap and I did notice that the gap seemed to be closing in a bit. The leaves were something drooping or something. And I'd been doing it all day, you know, and eventually my luck had to run out, didn't it? And uh, yeah, it kind of, I didn't quite see where I was going and then I caught something and I caught that worse and I was on the floor. No problem, just a bit of grass on the lens really. And just to show the fix for the OSD, it was literally a case of moving some stuff up the screen and this resulted in it being in the right place as soon as you got to NTSC mode. If you saw my review on the Runcam Phoenix Oscar edition, you saw that I had some issues with that. So I ended up actually changing frames over. So I put that one on the coppice and I ended up putting the arrow here on the nebula frame, which is the, the frame I was running the uh, Phoenix with. Now, as I mentioned, it's a really windy day and there's a bit of camera wobble anyway. It just happened that the Phoenix was doing a lot more. But I thought I'd just show this on a different frame as uh, we've got rid of some of that noise that was seeming to affect the sky um, and we're angled up a little bit more so we haven't got quite so many props in this one but um, yeah I'm I'm still really liking it a, a really good and pretty inexpensive decent CCD camera uh, what's not to love well if that wasn't obvious yeah I really like this I thought this is a really nice camera I mean I suppose the only bad things it's got going for it is it's it's quite large-ish for the modern camera and it sticks out quite a lot so it's it's not for a micro build but at the same time it's like if you've got space uh, uh, this is a really nice camera it, it's not displacing the Rattel as my favorite but I should point out this is quite a bit cheaper at the moment so that's an advantage and there's plenty of people that will not succumb to putting a CMOS camera on their plane or quad they'll want a CCD and this is a pretty good CCD so yeah thoroughly recommend it check it out if you will if you don't like the lovely red color you can also get it in black or blue you can get it in pal as well as NTSC and the 1.8mm lens that I've got, or a 2.5, so there's lots of options there. Um, this was supplied for review by Banggood, so thanks to them, and there'll of course be links down below where you can check it out for yourself. I hope that's been helpful, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.